If you use a digital mixer in your church or venue and you send an aux recording feed to a separate control room or video production suite, how would you like to be able to remotely control 24 to 48 channels of that recording feed in your control room through a single mic cable? I'm Ira White. I'm Technical Director with Deep Creek Baptist Church in Chesapeake, Virginia. Today I'm going to show you how to implement a MIDI remote control of a digital mixer. Uh, the purpose of this would be in order to control, say, a broadcast or recording mix that's coming out of the digital mixer, but be able to remote control that mix from another location in the church, even a few hundred feet away if need be. That might be a video production room where you want to be able to control the audio that's either being captured to computer or streaming out to a live audience. You can actually accomplish this with any MIDI control device, whether it be something like a JL Cooper MIDI controller, a digital workstation recorder unit, or another digital mixer, whether it's small or large. This is a JL Cooper Fader Master MIDI controller that I first bought uh, for accomplishing this task. Uh, it's a basic unit that you could find uh, on eBay. I don't think it's in production anymore, but I found this one on eBay. And it has eight faders and multiple banks of those faders, so you can control multiple channels with it. This is the unit I'm currently using for MIDI remote control. It's a Yamaha digital recording workstation, the AW2816. This particular unit you can still find on eBay, though it's been out of production for quite a few years. Very flexible for home recording and project studio purposes, but it's also got eight faders, as the JL Cooper does, and three banks of those faders. So you can control up to 24 channels with this particular unit. This is the main house mixer that we're using at Deep Creek Baptist. It's a Yamaha DM2000 digital production mixer, but any mixer with MIDI control, and as far as I know, every one I've seen does have MIDI capability, uh, can work with this remote control setup. Every MIDI device will have MIDI connectors on the back of it. These are five pin MIDI connectors. It was the same connector that used to be used years back for analog tape recorders. It was called a DIN plug back then, D-I-N. But you could always find MIDI connectors, cables, and plugs at music stores. For our purposes, we will only be using a single cable from the remote control to the house mixer. So we will have a MIDI connection coming out of our MIDI controller and then going in to the MIDI end of the house mixer. Here's your standard MIDI 5-pin plug on a MIDI cable. And again, you can find these MIDI cables at music stores. Uh, generally, I guess you could find them up to maybe 20 or 30 feet. But if you are needing remote control from a, an office or video production room, it's maybe 100 or 200 feet away. That might be difficult. That's why you can actually run a MIDI signal through a standard mic cable. Because of these five pins, MIDI actually only uses three pins. And if you can see the five pins in there, the center three, not the two on the end, but the center three are the only ones used. So we can actually make up a MIDI to XLR adapter. So we could use a standard mic cable or mic line, feed the extended distance through that mic cable, and then have MIDI adapters on the end to convert that XLR over to a five pin so we can plug in for our MIDI control system. This is a MIDI to XLR adapter that I made up. It's easy just to purchase a three-foot MIDI cable so the five pin connectors are already wired up. You don't have to hassle with that. Cut that cable in half and then put the XLRs on the end of each half. With this MIDI connection, the only concern might be the shielded ground. On a MIDI connector of those five pins you can see in there, the very center pin is the ground pin. That would be the shield pin. I want to make sure that that center pin is connected to pin 1 on the XLR. You can use any voltmeter to check continuity between the wires that you strip out on the end of the cable that you cut off and, and that center pin. So just make sure that's wired to pin 1 on the XLR. 
the other two pins on either side of the MIDI connector, it really doesn't matter which way they're hooked into the XLR, whether it's pin 2 or pin 3, just whatever you do on the MIDI adapter for the one end of your connection, that the MIDI adapter you make for the other end of your mic cable connection is hooked up the same way. The only other consideration when you're making up two MIDI adapters, one for each end of the mic cable, you'll need uh, corresponding XLR connectors uh, for each end. So where mic cable would normally have an XLR female on one end and an XLR male on the other end, you'll also need an XLR female on one MIDI adapter, an XLR male on another MIDI adapter. Now I've got the Yamaha workstation hooked up with the MIDI out of the workstation going to the MIDI in of the house mixer. One advantage of using something like a workstation uh, like this particular unit or another digital mixer is that these units have motorized faders. So now you can actually store your settings for those fader positions in the workstation or the digital mixer to correspond to the settings you have in the house mixer and you can call it up so you've got a starting point every time. In your situation you may have a larger digital mixer that has 24, 32, 64 channels all available on its surface. Uh, that can make it easier to control that number of channels. In my case, with the workstation, we only had the eight faders to work with, but three banks of those faders on three buttons up here. So as I pushed each one of these banks, it went to eight more fader positions, bank one, bank two, and bank three. So whether you've got a mixer that has all the faders at once or has different banks of a limited number of faders, you can still assign those individual faders, in this case 24, to individual MIDI channel numbers in order to have individual control of 24 or however many it is channels on your house mixer. The way to accomplish this with a digital mixer or digital workstation is to go to the MIDI page there should be a button for that. And then there should be a maybe a tab for control assign or control change, something of that nature. And that will get you to the control change page. On this page, you'll see a list of control change channel numbers, which can be scrolled through. In this case, 0 through 119. And next to those numbers, you have the various items and parameters that can be set for that control number. In our case, we'll be using all fader assignments. You can see for control change channel number zero that it is not currently assigned. But I could come over here and assign that control change channel to a fader, to an on-off switch, to a phase control for a channel, to a pre-post switching for an aux send, to delay, to EQ, to dynamics, any a number of things in this mixer that you can assign to a particular control change number. In our cases, we'll just be assigning to faders. And I've just, for our purposes, set uh, control change channels number 1 through 24 to correspond to the channel fader for inputs 1 through 24 of this mixer. So I've got control change channel number one, set to fader, set to channel, and then set to input one. And so it's very easy just to go right through one through 24 and set them all up. So that control change number one through 24 corresponds to channel one through 24 fader. Now here's where it gets a little bit more complicated in that we're not using the main faders on the digital board for our broadcast or recording feed we're using an aux control that allows us to set individual levels for each channel for that broadcaster recording feed. The beauty of a digital board is you can set it up for a stereo pair of auxes. And when you do that, it not only gives you level control for that stereo aux feed, but it also gives you individual pan controls for each channel. So I'm switched over to the aux feed currently and we can go into the control change of this board and see how we can set up the aux faders for remote control. Now again we'll go to our MIDI page 
and then we'll go to our control change assign page and we've got the same controls we had on the digital workstation. In this case you'll notice control change number one is assigned to a fader just like the workstation was but as we cursor over we notice it's assigned to aux 11 send so where I could choose the regular channel control or master or aux 1, 2, 3, 4 I can set it to aux 11 again aux 11 and 12 are my stereo pair so you just assign it to one of those auxes and it really controls both with a stereo pair so we've got the workstation fader number one controlling the aux control for channel one on the main house board. Now where we've got all the control change numbers assigned to faders for aux send 11, we just set them to the various inputs 1 through 24 corresponding to those control change numbers. If we didn't want consecutive control of channels on this board because maybe there were certain channels that we didn't need to control or uh, more so if we were short on faders from a smaller workstation or digital mixer then we could skip channels we didn't need to control and just assign those accordingly to those numbers so if say we wanted channel 8 on there to jump all the way up to channel 48 on this board we can do so by just assigning input 48 to control change channel number 8 on the board here. So you can control any channels on this board from the control change channels available from the remote workstation. One more thing I almost forgot. Once you've set up your control change assignments for all the things you want to control, uh, you want to make sure that nothing else is assigned in your control change parameters. A lot of other channels may have settings that they come defaulted with in either the workstation or the digital mixer. So what you want to do is go to any other assignments. In this case, I'm going up to uh, number 52. It actually has a channel assignment for an on-off switch. I want to go to any of those other uh, configurations and set them to no assign. Once you've done that, you will not be surprised by weird things happening from your remote control change on a Sunday morning. Last thing we need to do is go to the MIDI uh, setup page. This allows us to set the transmit and receive functions for MIDI signals coming in or going out. So in this case we want to go to the top of that page. It's got a channel number. This is a general MIDI transmit number. Uh, channels 1 through 16 are available. If you haven't used MIDI in these mixers before, then uh, it's probably defaulted to channel 1, so that's fine. You can just leave both units on channel 1, but whether it's 1 through 16, if, if one's set to channel 2, make sure the other's set to channel 2 and vice versa. Then we drop down to the control change area. That's the only other area we're concerned with. We've got a transmit or a receive function that we can enable for control change on the units. Since the workstation is just sending or transmitting the remote control information to the house mixer, it will be a transmitting device, so we select transmit for control change on that one. And on the house mixer, which, which, which will be receiving that remote control information, we want to go over and select receive for the control change on the house mixer. With a workstation controller like this, it could be a little bit confusing working with three different layers of eight. You'll notice as I switch between those three layers uh, for a total of 24 channels. So I've put a label down here which has three levels of text corresponding to the three layers which indicate what I'm actually controlling on the house mixer. So you'll likely want to do this on any remote controller you use uh, so you'll know what you're controlling on any fader on any given level. Once we've got the control change assignments on our main house board set up the way we want them, then with our mic cable hookup, and I've used it with up to 200 feet of mic cable to another location in a church, we can have our MIDI controller controlling that broadcast and recording feed on our house mixer. Now, for example, I'm right now in the normal fader mode for house control, so this is not the aux fader level. Uh, that we use for our recording mix. So
so in this case, if I move a fader on the workstation, like fader one here, you'll see no change on the house board. And yet if I go over here and select the AUX11 layer, where our actual broadcast and recording stereo feed uh, comes from, if I move fader one on the workstation, you'll see fader one moving on the house board. So if somebody's running sound, they won't even see this going on because it'll be happening behind the scenes on aux layer 11. But you'll notice if I go to number two fader, number two is moving, and I control number three here and right on down the line. And there's those eight banks of control. And then if I go to my next bank of eight, I've actually jumped a couple of faders and now I'm controlling some uh, vocal mixes on their aux layer as well. So see, you can adjust a totally independent mix from a remote location just about anywhere in the facility through a single mic cable. Finally, it's important to note that this workstation and other digital mixers have other functions in them, including pan control, effects controls, so you could actually have those controlling similar functions in the house mixer. For example, our AUX 1112 stereo pair gives us individual level and pan controls for each channel. So I could have the 24 pan controls of this workstation remote controlling 24 pans on this house mixer's stereo and recording feed. So there's really no end to some of the things you can do remote controlling this mixer from another location. So here's my MIDI remote control setup in our production office. Be aware that with basic MIDI control there is no audio passing through this board so you would not be able to monitor the signal coming off the house board. So you would still need a feed coming in to amp and speakers in order to hear that feed so you'd know what you're mixing. But if you have a workstation or a digital mixer like this, obviously it will handle audio too, and analog or digital signals off the board. So in this case I've got digital coaxial feeding off that main digital board and feeding into this board. I didn't want to tie up two faders for mixing that signal, so I simply routed it through two channels and used a pre-fader aux to feed it to my control room monitors and also to feed it out to equipment in the room here, which includes computer capture, could be video or CD recorders as well. So in this case, now I can use this for multi-purpose, where it's not only remote controlling the mixer out there, but it's actually processing the audio for me back in the control room. So I hope this helps you out in getting control of uh, some of your recording capabilities. And even more than that, I hope it will make you think about the possibilities with a digital mixer. So much of our engineering is based on working with analog mixers, and whether consciously or unconsciously, sometimes we put limitations on our perspective about what we can do with a mixer. Digital opens up a whole new realm. So be thinking out of the box, be thinking about creative ways of using your digital mixing setup. God bless.